I liken early voice to early social. So if in 2005, 06, no one was saying, what's the ROI of Facebook? Or they might've said it and nobody knew because it was brand new. And the analytics were terrible, kind of like we have. And I think a lot of brands are asking themselves the wrong question. They're asking, what should I do with voice? And really the question should be, how am I gonna change the user experience for my customers and my employees using voice? How should marketers really look at the ROI? Because ROI attribution, the money that's limited in budgets for a lot of companies to spend right now, they've really got to look at the return on investment before they jump into this. Great question. Every marketer is wondering that. So as a caveat, I would start by saying that looking at just ROI is a really simplistic view of voice. There are other ways to determine success. From the get-go, if you just look at voice commerce and you want to be present when people begin shopping more and more by voice, Juniper Research estimated that it's an $80 billion market by 2023 and spending via chatbots, which is under the umbrella of voice marketing, is expected to reach $142 billion by 2024. So for context, digital ad spend is expected to reach $520 billion by 2023. So you see voice commerce, v-commerce, as some people call it, really starting to come into play. And then there's the search aspect. So do you wanna be present when someone searches for your product or service? That's just a simple SEO play and you think, okay, so 30% of searches are done by voice this year. It might even be more by now. And do you mm -hmm. want your competitor showing up or no answer at all? That's what will happen if you're not prepared for this. So there's a bit of a hedging with that aspect. But then, you know, other than that, you've got the analytics coming in. There's never been another way where you can have direct access to what your customers are asking for. So let's say somebody's using your Alexa skill and they ask for something that your skill can't provide an answer to. You're going to see in your analytics, this was essentially an error, like an unreturned answer, a question that you couldn't provide a response to. And maybe it's something you hadn't thought of. That's a product insight. That's a customer service insight. So we've never had that kind of rich real-time analytics of what are people literally asking for when they interact with our product. You walk down the aisle at Walmart, you can't find what you're looking for. You're quiet. You're just thinking in your head, oh, this is frustrating. On a voice experience, you're voicing it right out loud. So there's that. And then you know, you can look at uh, metrics like engagement, just like we do on social media. I really, I liken early voice to early social. So if in 2005, 06, no one was saying, what's the ROI of Facebook? Or they might've said it and nobody knew because it was brand new and the analytics were terrible, kind of like we have on voice now. I mean, the analytics are very uh, rudimentary. So mm -hmm. it's really, it's getting in early and getting those learnings. You're going to be late to the party if you wait two, three years and you start getting learnings then because your competitors that have already begun doing this, like look at Garnier, the hair care company, they have a voice app, um, some of the other beauty care companies. And then also in finance, there's tons of financial institutions. Some of the banks like TV Ameritrade was one of the first, they have voice skills. So, and chat bots, right? So you have to use that whole ecosystem. You get tons of customer insights. And if you're selling something, just look at how many sales you had. But like I said, I think the ROI is a lot more complicated than simply sales or a bottom line. Here's an interesting thing real quick, just because you, you mentioned search, obviously, uh, again, looking at uh, what people have come to know as pay-per-click advertising uh, within that digital spend that you have, search is still a huge um, uh, part of that. It is still the lion's share, as it were. But when you are driving, when there is no screen, there's nothing to click. There is no such thing as pay-per-click. Somebody said to me recently, maybe it becomes PPC pay-per-command. Um, but what I have seen, and this is interesting, I know people use the term paradigm shift a lot, uh, but certainly in areas that I've spotted with Google, and, I, and I've had quite some insight into this, what I am seeing is a, sh a shift um, in certain areas for Google to get transactional. What does that mean? As opposed to uh, just paying, you know, charging somebody for the click on a search ad, they're actually looking towards task completion. So if you wanted to book a table, a book a table at a restaurant or a flight, those kind of things actually help to complete the task and then take a commission on the actual sale. 
I mean, effectively, it's kind of like becoming a huge affiliate marketer. I'm not saying that that's going to be the entire model, but I think with voice search task completion, which is very important, don't just uh, book my flight. Can you throw the Uber in there to pick me up and, uh, and, and collect me at the airport and book the hotel sure. at the same time? Sure. So well, I think it will see a shift towards transactional. Tobias, let me ask you then, because we've had a lot of good examples here, when you're looking at whether it's B2C or B2B, what is sort of the bar, maybe what are the goals and limitations that, you know, those kind of brands need to look at and at least kind of consider to differentiate? Yeah, I think what's happening now, like with any new tech that's being adopted very quickly, people are using some of the old paradigms to apply to a new paradigm. And Emily has brought that up as, as has Mike. And I think a lot of brands are asking themselves the wrong question. They're asking, what should I do with voice? And really the question should be, how am I gonna change the user experience for my customers and my employees using voice where appropriate? And uh, it seems like a small shift. It's actually quite a large shift in thinking. A lot of companies have set up voice teams to try and address voice. Whereas really, if we've all mentioned it, this is all a multimodal world where you're bouncing in and out of voice, bouncing in and out of text, bouncing in and out of an app. I, as a consumer, don't view my relationship with, let's say, Delta Airlines when we start traveling again as, here's my voice experience with Delta, here's my app experience, here's my web experience. I just view it as, here's my Delta Airlines experience. And it's either awesome, and I can ask my app where my luggage is, or I can't. And so I think thinking of it much more holistically as a user experience play, McKinsey just did a study over a decade and looked at how companies that value user experience and invest in user experience perform against those who don't. And over time, they outperform about two to three percent a year in terms of the stock price. And so that's the new battleground. The new battleground in the next 10 years is what is my experience, both as an employee and as a user customer with a brand. And that's where that's where the companies really have to look at voice, not as a standalone. Agreed. Belong. So I've been dying to ask you this question. How are you really looking at platforms like Alexa? you know, for especially for the industry you're in to really drive growth and engagement? So the right approach is really to think about <clears throat> what is the value you can add to your customer experience rather than, you know, what the business can, can be doing something with this new technology. So it should be actually flipped, right? So for, for example, for Audible, we started from customer experience. We were, we were trying to see what were, what were the basically the, the specific use cases that voice becomes very natural to the entire customer journey. For example, if, if our customers, our existing members are actually taking care of their kids with some kids book, then yes, the, the voice Alexa driven speaker will be perfect, right? The, the parent can actually engage with, the Alexa, with Alexa and then basically Alexa can speak to the kids with the book in the, the member's library already. So that becomes a very natural and intuitive use case. So those are the basically the, the specific use cases we were looking for and we prioritize when we actually approach the voice technology. On the flip side, on the prospect side, we were also actually identifying basically when customers just got the Alexa, the, their new brand new Alexa devices, they're super passionate, they're super you know, excited. They would actually engage with Alexa with a lot of conversations, maybe sometimes random. So maybe we were able to identify some of the, the, the specific you know, conversations or triggers that we can basically insert ourselves into it, right? So for example, if, if they want to know something about more, something more about a certain topic, we can recommend a book or some spoken content that becomes a natural entrance to introduce Audible, right? So it's not awkward, it's not, you know, very forceful.